so you can come into a comfortable seat on your mat. So however, whatever feels best for you. And we'll just take a moment to get a to arrive here. So we're going to start with a mudra. So you can bring your hands together, prayer center, an Anjali mudra. And then keeping your fingertips connected, you can just move the palms of your hands slightly away. And this is Panchamukra Mudra. And what this mudra symbolizes is integration. So I think for our practice, we can consider it the integration of body, mind, and spirit. So as you hold this mudra with fingertips touching right at heart center, you can close your eyes here. And we'll spend a few moments just starting to settle back in, reconnect with our body. Maybe just start to observe how it feels to be in the body. And you can even see if you can sense the perimeter of your body. how it feels to be touching the earth. And we'll feel the fingertips together. Maybe you may start to notice how the breath is manifesting in the body. So for me, it feels like in this mudra, my palms are almost expanding or going away from each other on my inhales and then on the exhales they come back in. I'm just feeling body and breath just working together. I'm doing this with very little intervention from the mind. And throughout this practice, we're really going to start to put our focus more on the body. If you notice that you start to get lost in some sort of train of thought, you can just gently bring the focus right back to the body. And you can bring your palms back together, so back into Anjali Mudra, heart center. And maybe you take a moment to set an intention for your practice. So it could be an energy that you're trying to cultivate that you can work on your mat, but then you can take it with you once you leave. And you can bow your head to the fingertips, really bowing to your higher self, to your inner wisdom. And lift the head back up, open the eyes. Inhale, hands come high. And exhale, hands come to heart center. I'll do that again. Inhale, hands come high. And then exhale, hands come to heart center. You can take that right hand, cross it along the left knee, and we'll take a side twist to the left. And then we'll switch sides. And we'll come back to center. You can make your way over to your hands and knees as we come into our tabletop posture. So we start in this posture just because it's a good way just to start waking up the body with just some gentle movements. So shoulders stacked over wrist, hips over knees, core can start to be engaged here. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, arch the spine, drop the head. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. And exhale, arch the spine, drop the head. And you can take some more movement, just matching breath to movement here. 
And then coming back into the body and taking uh, any other shapes that would feel good right now. So I need to move my fingertips to the sides. And sometimes even just facing my thighs too, stretching out my forearms. And we'll bring the hands back to center. You can extend the right leg out so it's parallel to the earth. Keeping the hips square to the earth, core engaged, so belly button starts to go back up towards spine. You can either keep your hands pressed on the earth or left hand can extend forward, gaze straight down. This is really great just for stabilizing the body. So you might be a little bit wobbly. I think everybody probably is a little bit, so that's okay. But just know that you're starting to activate all of your muscles. You take an inhale here, and then on an exhale, we'll take that cat-like spine, bringing our knee to our elbow. Coming back up, knee to elbow. Coming back up, knee to elbow. Coming back up, holding it here, and then slowly and with intention, hand and knee come back to the earth. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. And exhale, arch the spine, drop the head. And then we'll come back to neutral. This time, left leg extends outward, right hand extends forward. Taking a moment here to stabilize. Then taking an inhale, exhale, knee to elbow. Coming back up, knee to elbow. Coming back up, knee to elbow, coming back up, holding it here, and then knee and hand can come back down to the earth. You can curl the toes under, lift the knees just to hover, coming into your hovering table. Our hands are pressing the earth away. And you continue to breathe. You can step back to your high plank. So high plank, shoulders are over wrist, core is engaged. Always remember you can always drop your knees. We're still building strength. You can take an inhale here, and then an exhale, push back, downward facing dog. And then on your next inhale, glide forward to your high plank. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, glide forward. Exhale, push back. And one more time, inhale, glide forward. This time we'll stay here. And you can drop your knees. So we're all gonna drop our knees right now. So this is our supported plank. And this is still building strength. And the reason why I want to particularly point it out today is because we're going to do a lot of upper body strengthening today. So I've been feeling like my classes are very focused on strengthening the lower body, which I think is great. But we are going to spend some time strengthening the upper body today. And what that means in the yoga speak is that we're going to be doing a lot of push-ups. So at any point, always drop your knees and come into a supported push-up. I'm sure I will be. So right now, we're going to come all the way down to the earth, just keeping the elbows close to the torso in our low push-up, making it deliberate and smooth as we come all the way down. You can bring your arms out to the side, so like those gold post goddess arms, so 90 degree angles on either side of you. We're going to do some belly back bends here. We're going to take the skydiver version today, but if there's other another belly back bend that you would prefer, you could take that. So for the first one, shoelace side of the feet, press into the earth, keeping these gold post arms. We're going to inhale, lifting the chest, the shoulders, the arms. Gaze stay straight down. Breathing here. And 
and then coming back down. Just taking a moment to reset. And you're gonna bend the knees so the soles of the feet can look, or facing the sky. So you'll plant the upper body, so arms pressing into the earth. This time we're just gonna lift the lower body. So your legs aren't gonna get far off the ground. Maybe just like a little inch or hovering. But just lifting the lower body, and we're strengthening our lower spine now. And you rest the legs back down. But you can keep your knees bent. So for this last belly back bend, we're gonna lift both upper and lower body. And that's why it's called skydiver, because it's gonna look like we're jumping out of a plane. So on an inhale, come up. And then coming back down. Keeping the knees bent, you can windshield wiper the feet back and forth. And you can place hands a little past the shoulder, so closer to the ribs. We're gonna come up into our little baby cobra. So inhale, come up, so just arching the spine. And then coming back down. You can curl your toes under, pushing up through tabletop or high plank, and then we'll meet in our downward facing dog. And we'll take a few breaths here, so we'll stay in this downward facing dog for a few breaths. So you can take some time here, pedal out your feet. I'm just feeling stable and grounded. And then you can go high on your tiptoes, bending the knees to lengthen the spine. Walk to the front of your mat, forward fold. So we'll come into ragdoll forward fold, so feet are about hips width apart, opposite hand to opposite elbow. You can keep the knees bent here, head hanging heavy. And if you want to sway a little bit back and forth, you can do that. And you release your hands to the earth, bend the knees to lengthen the spine. So you bring the shoulder blades back, creating that flat back. Then hands can reach out forward, like you're trying to touch the wall in front of you. With the feet pressing into the earth, you can rise right up to standing, extended to dasana. You can take your left wrist and your right hand, reach up high to the sky, and then we'll take a side bend to the right. So stretching out the left side of the body. Coming back through center, you can grab the right hand with the left hand, and we'll take a side bend to the left. And coming back through center, we'll take those goddess arms, inhale, look up, opening up the heart space. And then hands can come to heart center. Inhale, hands come high. And then on your exhale, wrap your hands behind you. You can interlace the hands behind the lower back or you can grab onto your forearms. Inhale, open up the chest. So maybe you look up a little bit for a back bend. But then you can bend your knees. We'll just take our arms right over us for a forward fold. You can release your hands. Inhale, bend the knees, lengthen the spine. And then you can plant the hands. Left foot steps back. You can drop the left knee to the earth. Hands come high to the sky for your low lunge. And we'll open up for a high twist to the right. So twisting at the belly in your low lunge. And we'll plant the left hand down, coming into our low twist, so that hand comes right above our head. 
Right hand can come back to the earth, straighten out the front leg, half split. Inhale to lengthen and exhale, hinging forward. And you can walk your hands forward, curling the back toes under. Right foot comes to meet the left, downward facing dog. And glide forward to your high plank. And we'll push the toes forward so shoulders are slightly past wrist. We're going to come into a low push up. And you can push right up to your high push up. And then we'll come all the way down to the earth via your low push up. Inhale, coming up to cobra. Exhale, coming back down. Now you can push up to your supported plank or your high push up so you can curl your toes under, pushing up to whatever works for you and then back to downward facing dog. So again, whenever we come down to do a low push up or come all the way down to the earth, it's more important that you keep like the integrity of the posture. So rather than flopping down, just come down to your knees and really focus on building up the chest strength, the triceps, the shoulders. Right leg comes high, square to the earth. You can take an inhale here, exhale, glide forward, right knee to nose. Coming back up, knee to nose. And coming back up, knee to nose. You can step the right foot forward, coming into your runner's lunge on the right. So if you have blocks here, you can use the blocks. Also, if you have those big cans of tomatoes, like the 28 ounces, you can use those. Then we'll scoot the left foot up, coming into pyramid pose. So in pyramid pose, both feet are flat on the earth. That back foot's at about 45 degrees. So you can inhale to lengthen here, squaring the hips forward and then hinging forward. And keep little bends in your knees. Again, we're not locking out the joints, but you should feel a nice stretch along the right hamstring. And then left foot comes to meet the right, forward fold. Root down to rise up to standing on an inhale, hands come high. And then exhale, hands come to heart center. Inhale, hands come high. Exhale, bend the knees, forward fold. Inhale, bend the knees, lengthen the spine, shoulder blades go back. And you can plant the hands, this time right foot steps back. Soften the right knee to the earth, hands come high to the sky for your low lunge. And then we'll twist to the left for our high twist to the left. And keeping that twist at the belly, right hand can connect to the earth for a side twist. Left hand can come back to the earth, straighten out the front leg, half split. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, hinging forward. And then you can walk the hands forward, curl the back toes under, left foot comes to meet the right, downward facing dog. Inhale, glide forward to your high plank. Now we're gonna take a push up here, so if you wanna to come to your knees, you can. If you don't come to your knees, you'll push forward on your toes, so shoulders are over us, coming into one push up, coming back up, and then coming all the way down to the earth. Inhale, coming up to cobra. Exhale, coming back down. Curling the toes under, pushing back up through high plank or tabletop or supported plank, and then back to downward facing dog. So again, making it your practice. And then the left leg comes high. And take an inhale here, exhale, glide forward, left knee to nose. 
coming back up, knee to nose, coming back up, knee to nose, and we'll step the left foot forward, runner's lunge on the left. Knee is over ankle, you're on the ball of your back foot. And we'll scoot the right foot forward, coming into our pyramid. So again, both feet flat on the earth, hips squared. And inhale to lengthen, exhale, hinging forward. Right foot comes to meet the left, forward fold. Root down to rise up to standing on the inhale, hands come high. Exhale, hands come to heart center. So we'll take some of our sun salutation A's now, matching breath to movement. Inhale, hands come high. Exhale, bend the knees, forward fold. Inhale, bend the knees to lengthen the spine, shoulder blades come back. And then you can plant the hands, step back to your high plank. Coming into your low push-up. Inhale, upward facing dog. Let's pause for a moment in this first upward facing dog. Just taking advantage of this nice spine stretch. And using core strength, lifting the hips, bringing you back to downward facing dog. Inhale, tiptoes. Exhale, bend the knees, walk or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale, bend the knees to lengthen. And then exhale, forward fold. Root down to rise up to standing on an inhale, hands come high. And exhale, hands come to heart center. Inhale, hands come high. Exhale, bend the knees, forward fold. Inhale, bend the knees to lengthen the spine. And then exhale, plant the hands, step back to your high plank. Low push-up. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, tiptoes. Exhale, bend the knees, walk or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale, bend the knees to lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Root down to rise up to standing on an inhale, hands come high. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Inhale, hands come high. Exhale, bend the knees, forward fold. Inhale, bend the knees, lengthen the spine. And then plant the hands, step back to your high plank. Low push up. Inhale, upward facing dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. We'll take three breaths here. Again, comfortable in your downward facing dog. Remember keeping a little bit of a bend in the knees because that really helps to keep the spine aligned so you're not overextending the lower back. And then you can go high on your tiptoes, bending the knees, walk or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale, bend the knees to lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. This time we'll drop the hips, coming into our Utkatasana chair pose. So feet rooted into the earth, spine long, just bringing the hips low. And then breathing here. So just feeling the feet connecting with the earth, feeling grounded and supported. And you can bring your hands to heart center. You can go high on your tiptoes, as high as you can get them. Maybe you notice the legs shaking a little bit. You can start to lower the hips to the heels. Right before we get there, we'll take a little pause. You can get, keep the shoulders stacked over hips, gazing at something, your drishti. And then hands can catch you as you come onto your bum. And we'll come into our boat pose. So legs can be extended, arms can come out. I usually keep 
my shins parallel to the earth. It's just hard for me to keep my legs extended. And then inhale, we're gonna come down to our low boat. So upper body and lower body hover. And then we come back up on our exhale. So inhale, come down. Exhale, we come back up and we'll do 10. So let's just say that's nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. You can come up, cross your ankles, hands can come to the earth, step back to your high plank. And breathing here. And from your high plank, we're going to take one push up here. So you can come on down to your low plank, right back up, downward facing dog. Right leg will come high. Then right foot steps forward, back foot dials back, warrior one. So both feet flat on the earth, hips are squared forward. And breathing here. We're going to take eagle arms. So left arm can wrap underneath right, elbows in line with the shoulders. Now this can be um, not that accessible to some people, so if you, the eagle arms don't feel right, you can also just grab opposite hand to opposite shoulder. So we'll take our eagle arms and placing the weight into the right foot, we'll wrap the left leg around, so coming into our eagle. So you can have that foot wrap all around the calf or you can kickstand it onto the earth. But in your eagle, you're almost imagining that you're like wrapped around a pole. So if you think of that like center line, and also gazing at something that's not moving so that it's your drishti, you can also just help with balance. And I'm still balancing on that right leg. We're gonna run wrap our eagle, fly into our airplane. So chest is lifted, those hands are on two imaginary pillars. You get a little bit of a bend in your right knee. Keeping that bend in the right knee. We're going to take a step back, coming into our warrior two. So in warrior two, we've got heel to instep alignment. That back foot is about parallel with the back edge of your mat. And then arms are parallel to the earth. Gaze is straight ahead. And breathing here. flip the palms to the sky, maybe bending the elbows a little bit like you're a waiter and opening up the chest. And you can straighten the arms back out. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, right forearm to right thigh coming into your side angle. You can keep that hand above your head, you can reach forward, or it can wrap behind you. But whatever you do, continue to breathe. So yoga is a great practice that even when things get tough, just cultivating that calm composure, remembering to breathe. And remember that each posture, if there's a posture that you don't particularly like, you know it's not going to last forever. So you don't have to get caught up in the story because you know it will pass. And just like most things. And you can come back to your warrior two. Reverse your warrior. You can straighten that front leg. Maybe you shimmy the back foot up a little bit. We'll set up for trikonasana. So you can try to touch the front of the room coming into our triangle. Right hand connects with the shin or a block. So you can kind of think of this pose as those projects that Either your kids or you might have done when you were little where you put the leaves or flowers pressing it into a book so that's kind of what we're doing when we think that we're kind of on the same plane here
core strength brings you right back up. You can pivot to the left, toes come out to 10 and 2, and we drop into our goddess. Knees over ankles, shoulders stacked over hips. And breathing here. Let's see if you can get a little bit lower. You can try to go up on your right, the balls of your right foot for a moment. You can go a little bit lower. You can lower your right heel and then lift the left heel. And going a little bit lower. And both heels come down. And try lifting both heels up. This is really hard. You're probably like, well, this isn't that much fun. But it will end. And then heels can come back down to the earth. Pivot to the front, back to your warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, hands windmill back down to the earth. And you can step back to your high plank. So we're gonna take a push up here. So you can choose whether you wanna stay in a high push up or drop the knees. So let's all take a push up here. And we'll meet back in high plank. We'll drop the heels to the right for a staggered side plank. So staggered means one foot's in front of the other. So they're not stacked, but staggered, which can provide a little bit more support. And we'll come back to our high plank. We'll take another push up. Coming back up, dropping the heels to the left, coming into our staggered side plank on the left. Right hand comes back down to high plank. We're going to do one more on each side. So you might want to choose just to stay in high plank or supported plank, but you can customize your practice. But if you're with me, we'll do a push up, come up, placing the weight into the right hand, heels drop, staggered side plank on the right. Left hand comes down to your high plank. We'll do a push up, come up, heels drop to the left for our staggered side plank. Right hand comes back down to high plank, and then hips lift back, downward facing dog. Three breaths here. And push ups can be challenging, so. If this is feeling challenging for you, don't um, be discouraged. You know, sometimes we just don't use our upper body all that much. So just like anything, it's a muscle, it's a skill that just takes time to strengthen. Left leg comes high, three-legged dog on the left. This time, left foot will step forward, back foot dials back, warrior one on the left. So just taking a moment to settle in here. Both feet planted firmly on the earth, hips are squared, gaze straight ahead. And we'll take those eagle arms, right arm wraps underneath left. If you're in full eagle, you'll try to keep those elbows in line with the shoulders, forearms pressing forward, which can give you a nice shoulder stretch. And we'll place the weight into our left foot. So maybe even as you're doing this, if you want to try to do it with one like swooping motion, find something to gaze at that's fixed. As you place the weight to the left foot, right leg wraps around and you're in your full eagle. And I know that balancing in general can be very humbling. And it's also just different every day. Like some days you can balance, some days you can't. So I always think of it as like, take it as an opportunity to practice equanimity. And just be curious with it. Curious and playful. Still balancing on that left foot, we can unwrap our eagle, fly into our airplane. I'm breathing here. I do always like to imagine that my hands are on these pillars, and that really seems to help support me a little bit more. I'm keeping a little bit of a bend in that left knee. Take a giant step back, open up, warrior two on the left. You guys stay there, I will change my direction. I'm just getting comfortable in your warrior two. Inhale, 
reverse to a warrior. And then exhale, left forearm to left thigh, side angle. Deciding what you want to do with that top arm. So whatever you did on the previous side, you can do here. You'll probably notice too that one side is a little bit tighter than the other, and that's normal. And still breathing here. Core strength can bring you back up to your warrior too. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Then you can straighten that front leg, shimmy the back foot up a bit. We'll set up for our triangle now on the left. So trying to touch the front of your mat, left hand can come down to the shin. Hips open to the right. Think in with your neck, just see what feels good. So you can just look at your side wall, but if it feels okay for your neck, you can gaze up at your hand. Always just checking in with your body and seeing how it feels. Some things are challenging, but they should never be causing pain. And core strength lifts you up. Pivoting to the right, toes come out to 10 and 2, back into goddess. This time, close your eyes here. With the feet pressing into the earth, you can even just start to sway a little bit from left to right. And maybe you start to go a little bit lower as you sway. And finding some stillness. You can open your eyes and go back to warrior two on your left. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And then exhale, hands windmill back down to the earth. And you'll step back to your high plank. So we're just going to do that little sequence again. So again, maybe you do some of it. Maybe you stay in a supported plank the whole time. It's up to you. We'll take a push up to come down, lift back up, placing the weight into the right hand, heels stack over, so we have our staggered side plank. Left hand comes down, push up. Coming back up, heels drop to the left. Coming back to high plank, we'll take a push up. Coming back up, Placing the weight in the right hand, drop the heels to the right. Coming back to your high plank, take a push up. Coming back up, placing the weight in the left hand, right hand comes high, heels drop to the right. And then back to your high plank. Bringing the knees wide, you can sit right back on your heels, child's pose. Maybe bring the palms together in prayer hands. Maybe bringing the hands to the nape of your neck. That can be a nice tricep stretch. And the more you press your elbows into your mat, the deeper the stretch will be. So just taking a moment here. Hands can come back to the earth. And you can start to come back up through tabletop, curl the toes under, and then back to your downward facing dog. And then inhale, you can come high in your toes. Exhale, bend the knees, walk to the front of your mat. Inhale, bend the knees to lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. You can drop the hip, coming back into your Utkatasana hair. So back into your chair pose. You can bring your hands to heart center. Maybe you sink the hips a little bit lower. So we're going to keep the spine long here. We'll take a twist to the right. So you can hook that left elbow along the right knee. Hands can stay at heart center. Or you can open up your wings.
come into our forward fold. You can bring your feet about hips width apart, maybe with your two piece fingers, you can grab your big toes. Inhale to bend the knees to lengthen, and then exhale, straighten the legs forward fold. And of course, if you can't grab your toes, just coming into a forward fold. And then you can release your toes, toe heel your feet back together, bend the knees, come right back, Utkatasana. Now we're almost on the earth. So it's about to get easier, the last little push. You can bring your hands to heart center, get the hips down low. This time we'll twist to the left. Right elbow hooks along the left knee. And we keep our hands at heart center here. Or we can open up our arms. And then left hand can come back to the earth. You can bring your feet hips width again. You can take either just a regular forward fold or you can come into the gorilla pose where it means we are walking on the palms of our hands. So the toes come up towards wrist. And you can inhale, bend the knees to lengthen and then exhale, straighten the legs and just let the head hang heavy. And you can release your hands, toe heel the feet back together. Inhale, bend the knees to lengthen. And then you can plant the hands, step back to your high plank. So holding in high plank just for a breath or two, so pushing the earth away. Really imagine that you're trying to like open a giant door. Keeping that core engaged. The head's not dropping, so keeping the neck in line with the spine. So maybe that even means you're looking like right at the top of your mat, maybe even a little above it. And breathing. And you can drop your knees coming back into your tabletop. Let's take a cat cow here. So inhale, drop the belly, look up. And exhale, arch the spine, drop the head. And then we'll come back to neutral. Place the weight in the right hand, left hand comes high, and we'll come into our thread the needle. So you can rest the left side of the cheek onto the earth, that right hand can come up to the upper right corner. Right hand can come back towards your face, you can push yourself up, left hand comes high, and then left hand comes back to the earth. We'll take it on the other side now, so right hand comes high, and we'll thread the needle on the other side. So right side of the cheek can come to the earth, that left hand comes to the upper left corner. And then left hand can come back towards your face, lifting yourself up, right hand comes high, and then right hand comes back to the earth. Keeping the hips now um, in line with the knees, we're just going to reach our hands forward, coming into our puppy pose. The chin or forehead can connect to the earth. 
this is just a chest opener, so just imagining your chest trying to connect with the earth. You can lift your head and start to walk your hands right back, coming into tabletop. And then we can cross the ankles and we'll make our way onto our backs. So soles of the feet can come to the earth, knees point to the sky. Feet are about hips width apart. So you can see if you can graze your heels with your fingertips. So we're going to take two bridge poses. So you can either start with the triceps pressed into the earth, or you can interlace the hands behind the lower back and it becomes a chest opener as well too. So on an inhale, you can press the feet into the earth and then lift the hips up. And then bringing the hips back down, taking a moment to reset here. Hmm, we'll take one more. So you can take either of those variations. And then an inhale will come up. coming back down. You can bring your feet wide to the edges of the mat. Knees can knock in here. Hands can come to the belly. And you can bring soles of the feet together, knees open wide for Supta Vata Panasana. Yeah, to keep the hands of the belly or sometimes you can even feel nice. Rest them over the head, the backs of the hands. Or right on the earth. No, 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 don't lemurs like like this. Hmm. That's what I'm picturing. But just surrendering, feeling the body melt into the earth. Hmm. Trying to release any tension, anything that's still trying to tighten up or hold, and just letting it go. And you can give the knees a hug in. Now you rock a little bit side to side, massaging out the spine. And if you have a block, you can place it underneath your sacrum, or you can just bring the hands right underneath the hips, and we'll extend the legs up to the sky. There's coming into our gentle inversion. Also, if you're by a wall and you just want to bring your feet, let the, your feet rest up against a wall, that could feel really nice too. And you could even just stay there for the rest of the practice. Take the right leg, cross it over the left, and we're going to come into our lion go makasa. So that's our lion cow face posture. So the right knee is really stacked right on top of the left. And you can either grab your shins, bringing the knees close to you, or if you can reach them, you can grab the outside edges of your feet. So you should feel a nice stretch just along the outside of the hips.
and then you can switch sides. So unwrap your legs. This time, left knee will stack on top of right. And grab your shins or your outside edges of your feet, almost kind of like handlebars. You can really breathe into this stretch. Unwrap your legs. Take a happy baby here. So you can grab the inside edges of the feet, heels stacked over knees, and rock them a little bit side to side. And then hug the knees back in. And arms can come out wide. You can drop the knees to the left as you gaze to the right. And keeping that upper body and chest anchored to the earth. So it's okay if your knees don't get all the way down to the earth. And then switching sides. Gaze to the left as the knees drop to the right. Coming back to center. Give your knees one final hug. Also taking this moment just to express gratitude to yourself for making the time today. And then you can release legs long on the earth. Taking up some space here. Palms can face the sky. Head, chest, and shoulders start to melt into the earth. As we come into our final resting posture. Shavasana.
can start to bring a little bit of consciousness back. And you can start to roll over to your left or right side. We'll spend a few moments in the fetal position. Push yourselves up to a comfortable seat. We'll meet with our hands at heart center. And keep your eyes closed or just gaze softly at your fingertips. And you bring your thumb knuckles to your lips and to your third eye. I'm wishing you love and light on your journey. Everything that is good and light in me bows to everything that is good and light in you. Namaste. Thank you guys for coming out to practice.